Okay, guys, so in today's video, we want, basically, I want to show you the Y Finance package that I've developed, which is a very simple, very nice way to download tidy financial data using the Yahoo Finance uh, public API. So there's no need for uh, logging in, creating accounts or some API codes. Uh, we can easily use the, the public facing API to download all the data that we need. Um, so in the end, I want to show you how you can download and calculate various ratios. Here I've, I've uh, calculated the EBIT margin uh, based on income statement data. So that's EBIT divided by revenue. And uh, yeah, I've ordered this selection of companies to buy, buy their, their current EBIT margin. Um, so it's very easy to, since the data is tidy, it's very easy to use mutate to calculate whatever, whatever you need. And then it's easy to feed it into ggplot to plot it and visualize it in any way uh, that you would like to. So this is the end. Let's start at the beginning. So the first step would be to install the uh, library. I still haven't put it on, on CRAN and it's on my to-do list. So currently you can use remotes to install GitHub slash y finance you can load in y finance and tidyverse so the first thing you would need to do let's say if you have a set of companies for which you want the data is find the yahoo finance ticker uh, so that's the stock ticker that yahoo finance uses to as an identifier so you can tell it which for which uh, securities which stocks you want the data so if you already have ISIN codes for your um, for your companies, you can use the search stock function. So th this function takes in ISIN codes, takes QSIP codes, and it also searches company names. So if you have some fuzzy company names that you want to uh, explore, you can easily plug them into the search term uh, part of search stock, and it will give you results of securities matching the, the query. So we can run a few of these to see how how the result looks. So you can run the Eisen code. This is the Eisen code for Intel. Immediately returns Intel, and you have a few information, few few data points here. You have the which exchange it's on, the type of the the security, and this is the important one. This is the symbol. This is the ticker INTC. And using this uh, symbol for Intel, you can get all the other financial data. Uh, basically, all the functions in this package work. Uh, the first, uh, yeah, the the first argument is the the ticker, the set, the, the vector of companies for which you want the data. So this is using ISIN. This is using QSIP. So this is the QSIP for Microsoft. Same results. And something else you can find here. You can find also the name if you only have the tickers. And some other interesting data now this is a more fuzzy case if you have a, a set of company names so you don't have any clear identifier for the for the stocks let's say i got this from a search on uh, just biotech companies and i just just copied these ones now something to keep in mind is that if you just copy and paste this it's not going to work well uh it's the search is not as well as as good as google's so you will need to at least clean up these parts so it so you have the official company name as um as the um, as the input so without this if we were to copy these and if you're not getting good results you're not getting the 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 the, the securities try something shorter maybe uh, just a lexion pharma or something like that um going back to the code yes this is it and uh, there's two modes of searching i mean it's the same thing uh, however different um, different amount of results so for example you can search for nor nordisk and uh, get all results of the search and this will get you all of the no nordisk stocks in different uh, on different exchanges this is uh, mexico france germany I believe yeah uh so if you want to query for example the 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 german Novo nordisk stock not not the original us one 
I, yeah, it, I mean, it's not a US company, but uh, I, I think it's primarily quoted in New York exchange. So you can use any of these other symbols if you're interested in those, those results. However, if you have a group of companies if you, and you just need some names, um, you can do keep results top and this will give you one, one row per company, uh, which is the top result for the, for the stock. As you see, in most cases, pretty good. When you type in Nova Nordisk, you definitely most most um, frequently want the NVO ticker. So now for this group of companies, I'll, I will run this. Uh, I haven't run the companies ticker. I cleared the environment. So as you see, as it's downloading them, it has a a, a nice um, loading screen. And therefore, we have eight companies and we have eight results. The important part is this symbol right here. We can extract it and you continue. For, for instance, in, in as we'll see below in a mutate, we, we can have this as the input and then just have the symbol as the only output of a new, new column that you can use for querying other data. So now, now uh, I want to show you here what happens when you have a, a the wrong ticker uh, and how, how to know uh, what's the issue where you're not getting data. So common misspelling of the Apple um, uh, stock ticker is APPL. The, the correct one is AAPL. So let's, let's say uh, we run this query. We'll get into this later, but this basically get, gets the cash flow data for Apple. Uh, but here I just want to demonstrate what happens when you do, when you do a wrong ticker. So we, you, we run this. And the result is is blank. So we can see here, there's not no no result coming back. It's a it's a all of the functions always return a table, and uh, here we see zero observations of zero variables. It I try to have uh, helpful error messages. So if you had more items here, um, it tells you which ones were the wrong ones, and if you want to look into what which ones are the um, what is the actual reason for the error? You can do attributes result, and it will give you a, uh, a vector of which which uh, input items resulted in an error, and a matched uh, error messages vector with um, the reason. So here, 404 not found. One second. Da. Ne, izvini, greška ste. Nema problem, nema problem. Sorry about that. Uh, so here we see that there is a uh, 404 error. The stock ticker is not found. The useful part with, with, with this error handling is that if you have an error, you will still get the correct results in terms of this will only error for the ones that are, are, are mistaken. If you do the right one, APL, in the same call, the result is the correct one, yet it still gives you the, the error, so you know which ones are missing if you want to call them again. Like, like this, for example. Error items. you get the, the, the ticker of the incorrect ones. Okay, so uh, um, that's a, a, a small intro. So there's two types of data you can get with uh, Y Finance. I've grouped them as current and general data and uh, historical financial data. For the current data, I have, if you, if you already have tickers and you think they're the correct ones, you can get company names. This is a a function I've needed, so I've, I've developed it. So we have the Apple and the Microsoft tickers here. It gives you back the company names. Uh, then you can get summaries for the for the tickers. So we have um, these two. I didn't know these companies, so we can learn about them. It gives you sector, industry, business description, and other stuff. So here we see it even gives you the address of the headquarters, where, where they're from, 
you can call them up if you want to website industry sector and a long business summary so duke energy energy company in the us dx dxc infotech there's also full-time number of employees so this is just to get a, a description of the companies and then if you want to get uh, the last trending trading day price volume market cap so recent data you can do uh you can use the function get price that the only argument is thicker so we do this we see what was the last trading day the percentage changes different percentages uh what was the high for the day and market cap this is the most interesting for me when i'm using this function there was also volume somewhere here perfect so uh yeah that's that for current data so you can get a you can get just the company name you, you can get a summary and you can get a uh, the rest last trading day um price uh, change in price market cap and um, other goodies the core of the package is the historical financial data so this is the data extracted from financial statements and here we have three main functions that is the get the cash flows get the balance sheets and get the income statements um you order the tickers that you want to get the data for and there's two report types there's annual and quarterly so because we're using the free public uh, api uh, the limit for historical data is four observations uh, and that pretty much means if you're doing annual you will get four years four uh, four annual reports the, the the entire year data and if you do quarter you get the last four quarters for only one year yep so uh, here we can get the annual data for autodesk and cmg i don't know who they are um you can get it annual so you see it's 21 20 19 18 if you do the same thing with quarterly you see the the data is by quarter um there's quite a bit of data so this one is 22 columns tw so without ticker and date that's 20 variables you can see here the various points from the cash flow statement perfect another one is the balance sheet get bs and here we see the balance sheet for coca-cola and conoco phillips uh, this one has a bit more bit more variables uh, around 28 and finally we can get the income statement for city corp and uh, city corp or group doesn't matter and uh, bank of america city bank city bank sorry uh, perfect so these are the main functions now if we want to get uh get all of them i'm jumping a bit uh further you can use get financials and this will just download all three statements uh again you provide the tickers and you provide the report type uh perfect so here in this section i want to show you how you can use nesting to download the data in a very clean way so first let's start uh with the companies uh, with the company names which were just these biotech companies and then we will download the ticker and then the full name uh this is to in order to double check if you got the correct company sometimes the search is not so so clean so if we run that we see from no one or disk you got this sticker and given this sticker this is the full name we can mix and match here and we see that they're there they they were properly the, the the tickers are the proper ones uh now what we can do now that we have the tickers we can do another column here that includes all of the balance sheets 
for this one company. Uh, so if you want to keep it one line per company and just store your data like that, it's very doable. You just open a list uh, and then you do the call for uh, whatever, whichever data you want. Keep in mind is that you need to do a group by, by, by the ticker. Otherwise, this column will be all the balance sheets for all companies in each and every, in every row. That's something we obviously don't want. So if we run it like this, it's done. And if we check it out, so we have the, the, the initial thing that we have. And now we have the, the balance sheet. We did quarterly, so we get the four quarters, each line being a single quarter. So if you want to store your data compact like this, you can. Usually the way I use it, and I think most of you will be using it, is just by regular unnested data. Uh, so here, let's get the financials for these biotech companies. Uh, get the quarterly ones. Uh, here I want you, yeah. Here there's the loading. It does three for cash flows for income statements. And it tells you which one it's downloading at the currently. And now if you open it up, it will be uh, all of the data per uh, for for all financial statements. So it's quite a bit uh, for all the companies that you've provided. So he, here it's one one data frame. It's easy to easy to work with. And the example I want to show you is to just calculate the ratio because everything is in tidy format. There, there's no issue. We can divide EBIT by the revenue and get the EBIT margin. It's calculated. And then I want to show you a, a visual based on this calculation. So we take this data frame that we just calculated. We group everything by ticker. And then for each company, we want to get the last filtered out. So that's only one, one observation per, per company, the, the last quarterly EBIT margin. Um, we don't need this ungroup, something left over. And then once we have, we have this, let me show you how it looks. So we, we have one observation per, um, one observation per, per company. And here they all have the same date, the, the, they all have the same um, schedule of reporting. But if when you do, when you group it by ticker and you do a filter, you ensure that it's the last, um, it's the last, um, the last quarterly. Actually, this is a mistake. Let me double check. Yes, sorry. So because they're ordered the latest being first, we want the first uh, um, the first date in, in each ticker group. So we get the latest data. And the let's see if we can get to it. Quite a lot of columns. Here's the EBIT margin that we just calculated. And now given this, we want to put pull this data into a ggplot. Uh, call and just do a simple bar chart. We want to order it by lowest to highest EBIT margin. And uh, we can plot it right, right like that. So thus I, I want to conclude uh, this short introduction to the Y Finance package. Uh, I think it's a very, very nice and easy way to download the um, uh, basically without large limits um, the, the the API is not super rate limited so I'm sure all your data needs can be can be met um, yeah perfect let me know what you thought uh, if it's useful if you have any questions hit the comments or send me email message whatever bye bye